What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to Boston's Banter, where the sports are wicked and the banter is pisser. I'm your host, Frank the Bank. With me, as always, is Keith K. Lava LaCava. What's going on, Rose Canseco? Rose Canseco, <laughs> man. Man, I got to start coming up with names, Frank, because they're getting you better like each week. Still better than Tony Bromo. But hey, what's going on, buddy? What's going on? What's going on? Our fifth episode, uh, it's been great so far. I mean, what do you think? I think we're going very good, Frank. I mean, you know, we're starting to pick up on some things, and people are starting to gain some t- attention towards our show. So I want to keep this thing going. Yeah, man. I heard from a few friends. Ar- Armani, Same here. Armani out in Vegas. Yep. Armani, tonight. shout out. Yeah, one of the shout outs. So, and we got people in North Carolina that's watching and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. Um, in in honor of our fifth episode, I actually got us something. Oh, so, I don't even know what it is. Let's it's see what a surprise. it is. Surprise! Keith does not know what this is. All righty, all righty. Uh, let's get this popping off. What? <laughs> oh, what? Boston Banters, our first official hat. I got to take this out the bag and put this on my yeah, head. I'm doing it too. Yes, sir. I'm going to show the camera. We'll get some uh, more merch going Bada soon. Boom. But this is, Look uh, at that. Custom made. Frankie, doing beautiful it. dude. You like that? Thank you, bro. No problem. Happy to that man. episode, man. Yes, sir. Oh, How's yeah. the look on me, bro? Oh, that's dope. Yeah. That looks good. Thank you, bro. I like it. I'm glad you like it, dude. We're official. <laughs> it's official. It's official. Sorry. Uh, We're official, everybody. <laughs> there we go. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, let's get right into Wicked Piss of News. We got some good stuff to talk about today. Why don't you give us a start here? All righty. Yeah, so actually, Wicked Piss of News, um, it's really not good news, um, unfortunately. Minnesota Vikings rookie cornerback Kyrie Jackson, fourth round pick, number 108 overall in this year's uh, NFL draft. He died in a car accident over the weekend, along with two of his high school teammates. Um, He was really looking like he might have been in the running for a starting cornerback position on the team. And, uh, you know, a lot of those guys in the rookie mini camps, they already gained a connection with him. And they said that the way he was working was second to none, man. I mean, he was putting in the work and he was telling the GM of the Vikings that you guys picked the best one. So it's very Uh, unfortunate. You know, like I said, he was a fourth round selection out of Oregon. He also spent some time with Alabama. So prayers out to all of them, not just him, but the family, the friends, teammates, everybody that knew them. Young soul's gone way too soon, especially at the prime of his life he, he made it to the NFL. I'm sure that was his dream growing up and everything. So, RIP to all those guys. Chris. And into some other NFL news. The Titans have signed safety Jamal Adams to a one-year deal. Now, he spent the last four seasons with the Seahawks, as we all know. And he actually, when he was with the Seahawks, Frank, he broke the single-season sack record for a defensive back with nine and a half. He's, that's a good sign for them. But after he did that, though, I'm going to say this. A lot of injuries, and he hasn't yeah. recorded a sack since. Yeah, I mean, that's still a good sign. I think the, the veteran le- leadership will help a lot. Oh, certainly. So. But, but you know, in, in the last two seasons, he's appeared in just 10 games. So definitely got to work on that, but he is a good veteran safety. He's going to be put in there with Elijah Molden and Amani Hooker, so we'll see how they do. But mm-hmm. the Titans are stacking up. But over to some NBA news, everybody. DeMar DeRozan traded to the Kings in a three-team deal. Six-time All-Star pairs up with De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. Now, Frank, now this, this trade here at the Kings, now they're up and coming. At one point, we saw them as the only professional team with the longest playoff drought for a yep. long time. Yep. Now they're starting to put in these pieces, man. They're starting to look like a serious they contender. They played really good last year. Yes, they I, did. They were, uh, yeah, Sabonis is unbelievable. Yes, he's, he's, he's a beast. 15 and 15 every night, no matter what. Like, it's just, and that's just double. like by accident. Right. You know, sometimes he's got 30. Like, it's just crazy. He's they, they, That was a great move by them. Great move. Absolutely great move. So the Kings, they received DeMar DeRozan. The Spurs actually received Harrison Barnes. It was a three-team deal. And the Bulls received Chris Duarte and two second-round picks. So last year, DeRozan, he averaged 24 points with the Bulls, four rebounds, and roughly five assists. So we'll see how he does with the Kings. I mean, like I said, De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, they needed one more guy in that starting five to kind of help him out. I thought it was a great move. Yes, sir. And on to another NBA move. The so-called Celtic killer, Caleb Martin, has signed with the Philadelphia 76ers on a four-year, $32 million deal. Now, Frank, we all know Caleb Martin. I'm not going to lie. He really pissed me off in the playoffs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, he's one of those guys, like, with Gabe Vincent. It's like a flea. Duncan <laughs> Robinson. He just was all over us. <laughs> but I'm going to say, though, it seems like every time he played against us, the dude was looking like Kobe. He looked great. I mean, <laughs> he was shooting 50% against us in not just the regular season and in the playoffs. And he also had four... 25 point games two of them were against the celtics in the eastern conference finals yes. he played his best games against yes us. <laughs> i mean he's now expected to be part of a front court that has now like we said last week paul george and mvp center joel Embiid. but i'll be honest 
they got to do more than just get Caleb Martin to contest with the Boston Celtics, baby. That's a fact. I don't care if they call him the Celtics killer. They call Bernard Pollard the Patriots killer, and every time we played him, we seem to beat him. I think we'll be all right. <laughs> we'll be fine. And some more NBA news. Summer League's, you know, heating up in Bronny James. Two games played. He missed one with knee swelling, but in those two games he played, and I'm not knocking him, I'm just stating the facts and the stats. Seven points in two games. Looking good on the defensive side, but definitely got to work on that offense. What are you seeing out of him, Frank? I mean, I've actually watched some of these games. I, I can't really say I've watched many summer league games before, but a lot of people have actually tuned in. The TV ratings were very high. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's pretty aggressive on defense for, you know, a 6'2 guy. But, he, yeah, he's... I think he could be more aggressive on offense. I feel like he ran down the court, would go sit in the corner in the wing, hope for a pass. Uh, I noticed a, several times the shot would go up. Before it even hit the rim, he was already running back on defense. So, I mean, very aggressive on the defensive rebounding and, and playing defense, and I thought he you know, looked pretty good, actually, but on defense. But you got to stay and try to at least right. – the ball could get kicked out there off a rebound. It could, you know, a lot of things, but he was literally – running back like it was a fast break like I'm like, like well, thinking his gotta, shot was nice he's getting right back I don't know like, you stay to down there. The yeah, I, I just I didn't understand that like he was the first person back but I'm like the, the ball was still in the air in and the he's air. already running <laughs> transitioning back. the defense I, I noticed it many times well like you said though I mean he has looked good on defense one of the plays I actually saw in particular Frank where he was actually battling with heat rookie center Warren Washington seven feet and he was he was battling him like he was that size Honestly, yeah well he his jump and his wingspan and everything they were talking about, but he, he was contesting shots. I thought his defensive aggressiveness, aggressiveness was a lot better than his offensive. I agree, 100%, man. And, uh, Frank, you got some more NBA news yeah, for I got, us? Yeah, I got some NBA stuff. I got some Red Sox stuff. I got a lot of stuff. Um, recently, Kawhi Leonard leaves Team USA. Saw that. Having by Derek White. knee in issues and, you know, the team kind of wanted to go in a different direction. There's a lot of, like, misconception about what really is going on with that um Derek White you know deserving of a spot he's great obviously in Celtics but there's a lot of talk about how Jalen Brown got snubbed and I was just gonna how say Nike's that. been very political and like you know he, he's called out Nike a few times Jalen Brown now and yep. he thinks that it's you know I mean if, if he's the the finals MVP you know one of the highest paid players in the NBA you're saying that you know and, and nothing to take away from Derek White but he is better than Derek White certainly okay and Certainly. he gets paid better than Derek White. And if you were going to replace Kawhi Leonard, J Jalen Brown is its almost identical, identical kind of player yes. as Kawhi Leonard. So there's a lot of, you know, Nike getting involved. There's, like, conspiracies out there. And I, honestly, it does seem that way to me. I mean, it, what, what other reason would you have? You know what I mean? It's, uh, I, I, again, nothing taken away from Derek White. The kid is amazing. We love right. him in Boston. But at the end of the day, if Kawhi Leonard and Jalen Brown are very similar. And I, if, I thought Kawhi, it would have been Jalen Brown. Yeah, when, I, when, I, when I heard Kawhi Leonard was leaving yes. Team USA, I was thinking to myself, I was like, Jalen Brown, he's got to step right That's into there. That's what I mean. It's crazy, and and, and so. it's crazy, too, because last night at the ESPYs, Jalen Brown just won Best Championship Performance Award. Yep. So how is my guy not on the U.S. Olympic roster? I, I didn't get it. And again, a, a lot of JB needs to get the love more, uh, man. He really Nike, does. Yeah, I feel Nike like he gets ignored vote. a lot. I mean, obviously, he did win finals MVP after Jason Tatum I mean, was at winning. He was the highest played player until you know, Tatum. Tatum just right. passed him, you know, right. recently by you know ten million dollars. Th there's million something dollars. under the rug that we don't know about, but obviously I think he should have been there. Love Derek White, like Frank said, not taking anything away yeah. from him, but I definitely thought Jalen Brown deserved that spot. But. I agree completely. Uh, Jonte Porter, who we talked about, the gambling. Oh you know, man, what's just, going on now? He just Frankie. pled guilty. Pled guilty. He pled guilty. I didn't see that conspiracy to commit wire fraud. Uh, could get three to four years in jail. Um, although he's been cooperating, so I do think he's going to get less. I think he uh, might get house arrest. I don't know. He might get no jail time, but they're saying fines and restitution. But he could get up to three to four years uh, in jail. That's some serious stuff, know? man. So it's, you know, but he has been cooperating and right. doing all the right things at this point. So I do think it might just be something where it's, you know, house arrest or very light sentence, if anything. Yeah, um, he's learned from that mistake for sure. I don't, oh he ain't going to be bet never again. Just today, like an hour before we started shooting this, Jalen Brunson. I saw that. Did you see the Jalen Brunson? I did. So he signed for 156.5 for four years, but he was eligible for an additional 113 million next year. So I don't know who his agent is or why he did that, but he literally took a 113 million dollar discount when he could have got 269. Yes, so I saw that. Not sure. I mean. 
good for you. I mean, obviously, 156 million is a lot of money. Yeah, play, right, but I mean, but OG and Obi <laughs> just got 200. I was just so gonna say that. It's like uh, again, Jalen. We were talking about Jalen right. getting paid, right? And he could have got paid if he waited till next year, but I guess he just wanted that money. So. I just saw that like less than an hour ago. So man, he's got all his boys over there. You know he wants to stay over there now. He don't yeah, care what he's getting paid. The money's good. The money, yeah, the money's. But the his money college homies, way. man, he's enjoying himself. Yeah. Um, the NBA 2K25 cover came out this Jason week. Jason we, Tatum. Tatum and Asia Wilson for the WNBA version. Yep. And for the Hall of Fame edition is Vince Carter because saw he, that he's you know up for the Hall of Fame this year. Um, it is the first time on the all-star edition that there is a WNBA player and uh, an NBA player. So we got Tatum and Aja Wilson together on a cover. thought that was kind of cool. I know yeah. we talked about the Madden cover a few, few right. episodes ago. So thought I'd bring that up. Yeah, I don't think there's no 2K curse, at least uh, knock on wood. Right. It's not wood, but I don't care. <laughs> uh, speaking of WNBA and transitioning to that, the rookie of the year for WNBA has been heating up and it's between Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese who you know in college always battled each other a lot and I mean just to go through a few things last week Caitlin Clark became the first rookie to record a triple double in a game okay and she has become the fastest player in the WNBA history to record 350 points and 150 assists she's averaging 16.1 points a game, six rebounds a game, 7.4 assists a game, and she's shooting almost 40% from the field. Wow. So, the Angel Reese is averaging a double-double, She basically. has gotten now, as of today, 15 straight double-doubles, which broke Candace Parker's record, record of, I think, 12 or 13. As a rookie, So, too. yeah, she's coming up on the record for an entire season, but she's gotten, she's at 15 in a row. <laughs> which is which is crazy. She's averaging uh, 14.1 points a game and t- almost 12 rebounds a game. So averaging a double double yeah, her rookie year, it's, man. It's been Good great for her. Good for, for her. both of them and for the Certainly. sport. Clark is at minus 600 on Fanduel for the rookie of the year, and Asia Reese is plus 350. So that's where we're at with that. Red Sox update right before the All Star break. All Star games next week. Um, if the playoffs started today, the Red Sox would be in. Yep, they've been doing great. Uh, they're coming up on the Yankees. Uh, I think they're only three or four back of the Yankees. The Yankees have lost 17 of 23 games. Wow. One of the worst records in baseball over the last month and a half. Um, so they're really, yeah, they're playing good. They're, they're at 50 and 40 as of July 10th. Um, they're six and a half back of the Orioles, who just got swept by the Cubs. So, I mean, we're, we're making moves. I, you know, I didn't think this team would be in it uh, like that, but we'd have right now the last wild card spot. If, if the playoffs started today. So. I, I'll be honest, Frank. I didn't see that, but seeing the resiliency this team has, I mean, we've been in the doghouse, what, the last two, three years, four years? I mean, obviously, yeah. there was the sign-stealing scandal and all that, but, I mean, look at what they did against the Yankees in that comeback game. That just shows that the mindset they're having, they're surging right now. Oh, what that was, was that on, so their right. last out? It like, was on the last strike. Yeah. Last strike. We hit a home run to tie it, and then we hit another home run, and Un- extras and, unreal. and won the game. That was awesome. an awesome game. That was an awesome game. Yes, sir. Let's so, go Sox. Yeah. The last thing to bring up, really, for Wicked Piss of News is, uh, I don't know if you've been catching any of the soccer, but Copa America and UEFA League uh, championships are both this weekend. Um, been great soccer. I mean, soccer's not huge in the U.S. I like soccer. I've coached soccer. Uh, it's, it is, it's been fun to watch. Now, I will say the Uruguay game, against Colombia was kind of crazy if you caught that, but after the game, Uruguay lost to Colombia. After the game, the Uruguay team players got in a brawl with fans in the stands. They actually went into the stands and it was a brawl. Why do I feel like I hear that every time in South America with soccer? I don't know, but this, is, this happened here. This was, this was in, this happened here. I thought you were South America, No, but I mean, that's the teams that played, but it, it's, it was actually, you know, where it was played i think it was in the carolinas or something so i don't think it was uh out of the united states so it was kind of crazy to see still that. still it happened south america oriented man man they take that yeah. sport seriously I mean, you don't see me running on to oh, that's crazy Stadium, yeah. fight copa play, america man. this is the 48th edition uh of the tournament argentina is the defending champ messi of course they're back in the finals against colombia who's got a ton of wins in a row so i mean it's it's gonna be a good game that's actually uh sunday the 14th at eight eight o'clock but before that, Sunday on Sunday also is the UEFA Championship Euro. Um, so that's at three o'clock on Sunday. That's uh, England versus Spain. Um, that's again, great, great soccer. Um, I, you know, that's really all I got for that. But I just thought that was interesting.
No, that, no, that. definitely, so, man. Let's move on to the Foxborough focus. Uh, we don't have a lot to talk about again today. Once the preseason starts, and you know, we can actually uh, have a lot more to talk about then. But you know, what do you got an update on the Foxborough focus? So, like Frank said, not a lot, but we do have some semi-big news here, and it involves one of our star players who potentially could not be with us next season. Star pass rusher Matt Judon. Reportedly, him and the Patriots, they are not close to an extension. Now, he's entering the final year of a four-year, $56 million contract he signed back in 2020 with the team. Coming off season-ending bicep surgery, entering age 32 after only playing four games. Yep. Now, are the Patriots going to want to pay him that big money when they're in the rebuild right now? Yeah. So, coming off of that injury now, I think they got to play it smart and see how he does. And obviously, if he, comes, say that. if he comes back, if he gets even 15 sacks, yes, pay them. He plays man. a full season, plays well. Right. You know, why not give, well, him, give him an extension? Don't get me wrong, right. too. I I love Judon. The guy has played 38 oh, games animal. for us, and he has 32 sacks. He's an animal. When now, he even said to reporters that he's out for vendetta this season, meaning that he's going to come on that field with those red sleeves. I want to see him get three sacks in the first game. Now, like I said, Frank, 32 sacks in 38 games. So basically every game he's been playing with us, he's been getting sacks. Yeah. Almost. Now, I think we, he is worthy of getting one, but after that injury, it's a little iffy. So we need to see how he doesn't take it slow because Elliot Wolf right now, with this rebuilding stage we're in, we cannot take any chances. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me too. Uh, the only thing I got is the, the first preseason games coming up sooner yes, than you sir. guys think. August 8th, 7 p.m., Gillette uh, at, versus the Panthers. So it's home against the Panthers. Um, you know, we're only a couple weeks away, which is exciting. Can't wait. So cannot wait. Let's jump right into the lab around. So this week in lab around, we're going to talk more fantasy. That's kind of what we're gearing up towards. We're almost in draft time for fantasy football. So what we're going to do today is fantasy draft strategy. So I'm going to spit out some strategies to you. You know, talk about guys, you know, the strategy, whatever you'd like. But I, there's a bunch of different strategies. And when you're drafting, obviously, your strategies can change. You can implement multiple strategies. It, it, you know, let the draft kind of come to you and see what happens. Obviously, right. if it's starting to get thin at a position and you need somebody, then you might have to switch gears. But um, let's start off with some strategies here. Um, one of the first strategies, which I'm notorious for doing this, or at least I used to be. I'm a less now than I used to be. But... Running back heavy, where you basically go your first two picks are running backs no matter what's out there. So why don't you give me a little bit on that? So I think nowadays, I think that is actually one of the best strategies you can have. Let's face it, running backs are few and far to come across, especially the elite ones in fantasy football. So, yeah, you got to take advantage of that. And then afterwards, don't get me wrong. Yeah, you want to get good receivers, too. But, I mean, the receiver depth with the talent of the elite receivers kills the running back, you know, talent. Yeah, yep. There's so many more good receivers, in my opinion, than there are elite running backs in fantasy football. So, yep. yes, I think, in my opinion, that is the best strategy that I like the most, where you go running back heavy, and then you can focus on the rest of your team from there. Yeah, I, I, I've done that a lot. I mean, with the handcuffs and different things that going on now, I mean, in PPR leagues versus non-PPR leagues, uh, I mean, you can definitely change that up based on what you like and how many wideouts you need to start. And, you know, there's a lot of things that go into it. Know your your scoring settings in your league, obviously. Know you how many roster spots you need to have. Like, mine and Lee, uh, Keith's league are different than that. I have three wideouts. He has two. So, it's like, you got to know all that, obviously, going into oh, it. Oh, certainly. You know? Well, so. like you said, with the running back, though, it's like, you got Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry roughly ranked around the same place. So it's like oh, you yeah. have that 12th pick, you get the back-to-back -back or 10th you pick if you're in a 10-man. Yeah. Go back-to-back. -back. I did that one year in, in my league, yeah. actually. I took yeah. Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry. You can do that. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Sir. Um, let's go on to – let's go zero running backs, Freddie. So kind of the opposite um, where you're basically taking – the leftovers later in, in the draft and you go zero running back. I have a friend that does this, implements this every year, and he seems to make the playoffs every year. I mean, I think it does cost him maybe a championship here and there, but he goes real heavy on wideouts, tight ends, and, and quarterback, and he really does not pick a, a running back until later, and he just hopes for handcuffs and he hopes for you know the, the committee to really come right. into play. Right. So why don't you talk a little bit about the zero Running so back strategy. zero running back strategy. Now you're going to be doing this. You're getting a lot of receivers. You better be in a PPR league where that's going to help you out and be yep. more efficient. Now, like Frank was saying, you're going with the zero running back strategy. Obviously you got to get running backs at some point, but yeah, if you're going with zero top tier running backs and you're going with more elite receivers, like he said, he got three receivers on his lineup. I got two, but it, I mean, we have three flexes each. Yep. So PPR leagues, very efficient to get those guys. But if you're going to go with handcuffs, yeah, you, you definitely want to make sure you're getting somebody who is behind a injury-plagued running back, like, say, Trey Benson with behind James Conner. Oh, yeah. 
and or say a Chase Brown behind Zach Moss. Zach Moss. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm not saying that's a bad try. Do I want to do that? No. I like getting the top tier running backs. But again, there are some elite receivers. I mean, look what CD Lamb did for Justin last season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It all depends on how the draft's going, too. Obviously, you might want to do the zero running back strategy, but if CMC is sitting there at three or four and nobody's picked them and you're the third or fourth pick, you better take CMC because you'd be crazy not to. If CMC is at the third pick, I'm looking at everybody in that draft. I'm saying you guys don't know what the f*** you're doing. All right, let's move on to how about the balance approach where you balance wideouts and running backs? Yeah, so, I mean, you got to – it all depends on where you land if you're in a 10-man league, 12-man league. But, I mean, that's something, too, where I don't stray away from depending on where I am. So, it's like, for example, last year, Frank, I went with um, – uh, my first pick was Justin Jefferson. Yep. Then on the back-to-back, I went Travis Etienne and Aaron Jones. Now, yeah. obviously, Aaron Jones had a rough year, but I was thinking I got the top receiver in the draft. Then I went back-to-back with running backs, and right. then I went Mike Evans and a few other receivers after to kind of balance it out. Yeah, uh, the balance approach is, is good. I see a lot of people do that. I mean, you want to. it would be great if you had a top-tier running back and a top-tier wideout, and then you just fill in as you go. Right. But that's not always the case when you're drafting, but I think that's a great way to do it. Um, what about the best available player approach? So this is basically the draft where no matter who is available, whoever's the best available, you take. Doesn't matter position. You're not even looking at position. Now, obviously, if you already drafted a quarterback and the best available is a quarterback, you're not going to be taking your backup quarterback before you get a starter. <laughs> Unless on you're your, on auto draft yeah, or something. So, but at the end of the day, you're basically drafting whoever is the highest rated player. So what do you think on that? So I think that's kind of a foolish move, Frank. Like you just said, like if you already have a quarterback and then the next best available player is another quarterback and you're just thinking, oh, that's the next best available. It's just some people, like if they're new to fantasy, they think like, oh, I'm going to have two nasty. My dad thought that. He thought having two good quarterbacks would have helped. I said, dude, we're not in a two quarterback league. Yeah, yeah. So, but yes, it, it, that kind of does screw you because you need to look at your team first. You need to look and see what you need. I mean, if you got three receivers on the board that are nasty and then the next best player is a receiver, yeah, you're going to have four nasty receivers, but you, why don't you look at a tight end look at a running back maybe get some more running back depth who knows maybe even a late qb there's a lot of good late qbs this season but yeah i'm not a fan of that strategy frank yeah i mean i can't say that i don't do that but that's usually in the later round so i like i'll implement oh yes a yes, strategy yes. depending on how the draft's going early on like if wide outs are getting taken a lot then i might have to just grab a wide out and then you know as it gets later in the draft i look at I definitely look at the average draft pick for like who's best available, highest rated, um, as the draft goes on for like bench right. players and stuff like right. that. Um, our leagues both have a lot of positions, um, so we have a lot of starters. Right. Um, so it's really. You know, I try to get the best available of, of a starter. I'm not trying to get a backup guy. Well, you saw what happened you know. in my league last year. Somebody took a tight end, then it went boom, boom, boom. All tight ends they run off, off the board. Quick. Yeah, well, that's another strategy, a tight end strategy. There's, there's a lot of strategy. I mean, there's, we only, we're only we only talking about eight strategies today, but there's a ton of strategies oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. that you can do. And, and again, you're going to probably use multiple strategies. You just got to kind of figure out how your draft's right. going, know your scoring settings, things like that. Um, so going back to like what you were saying about late round quarterback. So the zero quarterback approach is is basically say I'm not going to pick a quarterback until very late in the draft. So what's give me a little bit on that? Well, I'm going to give Justin a shout out here and I'm going to say how did Daniel Jones work out for you with that strategy, buddy? But again, uh, I think that can work out depending on who you get because I don't blame him. The year before, Daniel Jones did actually pretty oh, yeah. well. Fantasy wise, he did great. Right. And then that year, the first game, he got Justin three points. But I couldn't say much because Joe Burrow only Joe got Burrow me three. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if you look at these late round quarterbacks where you could possibly get a steal, a diamond in the rough, yeah. you got Will Levis, like we've talked about, yeah. Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, Tua, Brock Purdy's even lower on that list, which I was surprised about. Yeah. And Baker Mayfield. You got some guys there. Again, I you know I somewhat go in the middle of the pack looking for my quarterbacks, but if I had to, I mean those are some pretty good guys that you Super got on that was list. Pretty good for me. I ended up I had to go. He was my third. I, I drafted two quarterbacks. They both got hurt. I forget who they were, and I picked up Tua. And mm-hmm. then of course he got hurt. You know, oh, I mean, the, concussion, the concussion. Yeah, so yeah. That was I was playing you that you week. You were playing me close. <laughs> Every everything could have went wrong. Went wrong. So I lost three quarterbacks in one season. That oh, was that's, that's but scary. I mean to have him on the waiver wire. I mean when he's healthy, he can put up points. I mean I'm. I used to do that notoriously. I mean, depending on who's there, again, if I, if I really feel like there's a value in a quarterback that should have been taken, I'll probably take him. But I have been, like, I got Dak Prescott in, like, the 14th round one year. So I was like, all right. And he was, you know, 
up there in top 12 in, in fantasy points for quarterbacks. And, you know, it's it, you can find some diamonds, like you said, right. in the rough yeah, right. further down the line. But I'll tell you right now, I don't care if Justin Herbert is available in the 10th round. I'm not touching that guy. <laughs> you hate Justin Herbert. I am not a fan. He's got it. Lad McConkey though, I, I, so hey, he's going to go off. I want somebody else throwing Lad the ball. Justin Herbert cost me the playoffs one year. 10 points in a playoff game? Come on, Justin Herbert. Not a fan. <laughs> Kid. Ever since. Not a fan, <laughs> Frank. Not a fan. Oh, man. Uh, what about uh, wide out heavy? Early rounds, you're only taking wide outs. Your first two picks are wide out, so that's strategy. So I'm telling you right now, man, I mean, there's some big receivers there if you're going to go wide receiver heavy. I mean, you got CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, like I said, Justin Jefferson, Amon Ross St. Brown, A.J. Brown. Get, the list goes on. Those are all top-tier elite guys. And again, you're in a PPR league and you're getting these guys that are going to be eating up targets. It's going to be looking pretty good for you. But again, you still want to make sure that you get a good, solid running back on that team. But receivers, PPR leagues, you got a, a bunch of them. You're going to get a lot of points. Yeah, I mean, well, again, with your league, with only having two wideouts, if you can get two top tier wideouts, I mean, you don't got to worry about nothing else. Really. I mean, you could have the third in, in your flex spot, obviously. Well, but... No, I, I'm saying, but like those two positions are oh, good. And just, so oh, then right, the rest right. of your draft, you can just be like best available, right. like whatever I want to do. And I mean, I... I do like that. I mean, again, you can do that with three, obviously, three wideouts. A lot of a lot of leagues have three wideouts, two running back, one flex, one tight end. We we have a lot of flexes. We have, I mean, from a draft standpoint, you have a 12-team league. I have a 10-team, so I do have one extra position. It, almost the exact amount of guys are drafted between both our leagues. I mean, I think it's like a 10-person difference or something. Right. Uh, so it's it, it works out. Um but yeah, I do, I do, I can see, I do see people do that in your league and in mine. They, oh, they'll lot. just draft two or three wideouts and get the, that position out of the way. You know what I mean? So, um, talking about uh, handcuff strategy, which I mean, that's just a general strategy. It's not really like a draft strategy so much, but that's just something we're talking about. So why don't you, you know, give me a little on that? I'm gonna give you my top five first for the cuffs, and I, okay, I think that okay. is a good strategy. I do like that because we're talking about guys who are either gonna be like rookies, like I'm saying, they're coming onto a team where they're gonna be getting some potential because yeah. of the guys they're behind either being injury plagued or getting up there in age. Right. So I'm gonna name these five guys right yeah. now. You got Trey Benson, Tyler Algier, Chase Brown, Jerome Ford, and Rico Dowdle. Now, I like these guys because the running backs that they're behind Okay, minus Tyler Algier, but Trey Benson behind James Conner, injury plagued. Chase Brown behind Zach Moss, not a fully elite running back, so I see Chase Brown getting yeah. a, lot of, a yep. lot of touches. Jerome Ford, he should be getting a lot with Nick Chubb's injury. Yeah, and is. then you got Rico Dowdle, who Zeke's back, but again, Zeke, I, I've been here and hasn't been looking good in camp. Yeah, Looks yeah, like he yeah. put on some weight, yep. so Rico could be getting some touches. So this strategy I do like because that is, again, the definition of diamond in the rough. You're getting these guys late, and they could easily blow up. Oh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good way to look at it, too. I mean, the way I look at this strategy is if I'm drafting CMC, I better get Elijah Mitchell. 100%. If, I'm, if, if, you're, if you're taking a running back in the first round, you had better get their backup just in case right and keep him on your bench so i that no matter who it is and then some of these guys like Bijan robinson algier is a great point because Bijan's going to go high oh yeah it's like you better have the backup just in case he gets hurt well the you reason I, I mean? the reason i said uh minus him was because obviously Bijan is not really injury plagued uh, oh, those, but just having them in that oh, early, of course. I was early say, pick. And they're there a lot of times on the field at the same time. Oh, they yeah. A lot oh, of Algier did great last year. Yeah. Even even when Bijan was healthy all year. I, it's just it's one of those things where you should have him regardless. You know what people forget, too? He's in the 1,000-yard rusher as a rookie two yeah. years ago. Algier was great. I, I thought he, I didn't think they needed to draft Bijan. You actually, <laughs> it's funny because, Frank, uh, you know, doing the years we've done fantasy and everything, you were the one that actually got me hip to the handcuff strategy, dude. I remember one year. you got to get the insurance. And there's actually, there's not many wide outs but there's even a few tight ends that get a ton if, if they get injured you might even want to have their backup you know right, what I mean? it happens right. from time to time where like it, you know a kelsey you could draft their backup Noah late, gray gray and yep. he actually looked good at times he but did. you know if, if someone is getting a ton of targets as a tight end you can still have their backup you 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 know if they get injured their backups getting picked up off right. the waiver wire regardless well look at look at uh week one last year uh chiefs lions travis kelsey didn't play noah gray actually yeah. had a good game that game he did and again if you're you're wasting not wasting but taking a, a second round pick i mean kelsey was going in the first round oh yeah you know what i mean he's going you know he's probably still going to go in the second or third right. round. so it's like you're putting all that you know draft stock into him you might as well you know if you have room on your bench why not you know absolutely 
And then now going back to, so our last strategy we're going to talk about is the tight end early strategy, I'm talking about tight end. So this is when you basically draft a tight end in the first three rounds and you get one of the top tier. I mean, there's, there's some top tier guys, and then it starts to fall off a cliff. I mean, tight end position is, is, is a very scarce position. So what do you got on that? So the, the tight end is a domino effect, like I was just telling you, at a, in my league. Somebody drafted a tight end, then all the oh. top ones went one after the other. And now this year, we actually have these guys, you know, Travis Kelsey, Sam Laporta, Trey McBride, I was very surprised, was third on the Yahoo rankings for third. tight ends. Third. Third. Okay. And then after him is Mark Andrews, got hurt oh, last yeah, year. Yeah. George Kittle, then you got Dalton Kincaid, Kyle Pitts, Kittle. David Njoku. That's the top eight right there. So I'm going to tell you right now, one tight end goes, you better start drafting more of them. Yeah, no, I like that. I'm, I'm surprised by that list. That's crazy. Kittle's going, what, fifth, you said? Or fifth. Sixth? Uh, overall out of the tight ends. They have Trey McBride at number Over three. Over Kittle? In the, and I had it in PPR format as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, isn't that, that that threw me That's, off? Yeah, I, th- I would have thought Kittle would have been like three. I or had four. to double check, make sure it was like PPR. And I mean, those stuff. those mock drafts could change as Easily, well, but, but that's I, just I, wild. With them having Marvin Harrison Jr. Come on, man. I mean, McBride looked good when when he played, but I mean, I mean they, they're third gonna tight play end overall. But third overall, yeah, okay, I think that's, it had, a, that's a reach. Volume might have something to do with that because I don't. They barely have anybody behind them on the you know tight end depth chart. Zach Ertz is gone. Ertz is gone. Yeah, yeah I, so. I, I, McBride's good. He's a good player, but no, I'm not. I yeah, definitely not take. But I was third overall. I would. I would I go mean, third more overall like tight end. Somebody that you know is going to be consistent just in case. I mean, he could go off and go crazy. Right. Right. I don't know. Like you said, Marvin Harris is they're going to eat up a lot of them targets. Right. As and, well, and then also so. the, their mobile quarterback, and then they they, they got the two running backs. And they, Connor, they're going to run a lot. Yeah, they, know, they like Trey to run. Benson. Yeah. So and see then, what happens. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much it for today. You got anything else you want to talk about? That should cover it all, Frankie. Another good show. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. This has been great. Um, well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the hat, no sir. No problem, brother. Um, from Bean Town to your town, stay wicked, piss everybody. From the TD Garden to your garden, thanks for listening, everybody. See you next week.